in a finite element method, if we're implementing it, we need to be able to implement finite elements, which by which we mean we need to be able to define what the basis functions for a particular finite element space actually are on a particular reference element and evaluate those basis functions. And there is a general mathematical framework for doing this, which dates more or less from the 1980s uh, by a guy called uh, Kiale. And uh, he coined the Kiale triple. So a Kiale triple is three numbers, KPN, which defines locally a finite element. Uh, the K is the local element. So that might be the unit interval, the unit triangle, a unit uh, square or whatever in, th in three dimensions. So that bit's easy. P is the space of functions that are going to be supported on that uh, cell. So in the simplest case, that might be the linear functions. Or it might be the quadratic functions. There's nothing to actually say that it has to be polynomials. It is perfectly legitimate to create a finite element method which uses trig functions as the basis. Uh, however, as a practical matter, it is exceptionally rare, vanishingly rare, to encounter a finite element space that isn't some form of polynomial functions. And in this course, we're just going to deal with uh, Lagrange polynomials, so we're just going to be dealing with complete polynomial spaces of essentially arbitrary degree, and we won't go to very, very high degree because it doesn't change very much. So that's what P is. So for example, in our simplest case, K might be the unit interval and, or the unit triangle, and P might be the linear polynomials. But actually, in order to define our element method, what we need is a basis for the uh, relevant um, function space, and that basis has to have the right continuity, and Colin will get into the continuity a bit later, and then we'll implement it. Um, but it's got to have a particular basis, and the basis has particular properties. And there are lots of bases for any polynomial space. There are infinitely many. So for example, if we just take the linear polynomials on the interval, which is a two-dimensional space, uh, you can choose any two distinct points on the interval to define the, um, that, that space. So that's actually an uncountably infinite set. So there is an enormous range of that. And so it matters which ones we're using. And what Kiale did was he said, well, the most convenient way in many respects to define that space is in terms of the nodes of the space, or a set of nodes. And a node is a function in the dual space of the finite element space. So what does that mean? Well. Functions in the finite element space, and in particular the basis functions in the finite element space, are functions from the reference element to, in this case, the reals. So you give me a point that's somewhere in the reference element and it gives you back a number. The dual space takes in functions in the finite element space and spits out numbers. So you give me a function and I'll give you a number. And um, we'll see in a second why it's very, very convenient for that to be the space that you use. And so you define the nodes, you define the polynomial space, and then you back out what the actual basis you're going to use is, and we're going to do that. Um, the way you do that is through this definition of what a nodal basis is. So a nodal basis is a basis where the nodes are orthogonal to the basis functions. Now, this is a slightly slippery concept. So when you hear orthogonal, the temptation is to think, oh, the basis functions are orthogonal to each other. So if I take the inner product of one basis function against a different basis function, I get zero. And that's not true. What's true is that if I take the nodes, then each node is non-zero when it applies to exactly one basis function and zero when it applies to all the others. And in the cases we're going to care about, it's one when it's applied to that basis function. That's actually not a hard requirement. Um, but in this case, that's true. So you get the, this property that that's delta ij, where that's the Kronecker delta 